Good morning. Welcome to St. Matthew on this lovely Sunday day that we have here to worship the Lord in this holy house. Let's rise this morning, let's open our hearts and minds to worship, and let's sing, Open Up the Heavens. Glory like a fire, awakening desire, we burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we sing and open up the heavens. We wanna see you open up the floodgates of mighty rivers. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens. We want to see you open up the floodgates. A mighty river. Am I turned on? Yes, you can hear. So we are having this celebration today as we have the rite of confirmation for eight young folks here. We like to celebrate things, and if you notice when you came in, there's a table out there that has the number 100 on it, and that's because at 8 o'clock we have a gentleman that comes, Gordon Raymond Schneider. He turned 100 years old. There's still some birthday cake out there if you want to eat it. And in order to have the concept of what 100 years of living is like and what was going on 100 years ago, I asked him, well, we get together, these men of wisdom, older folks, come and join together in a breakfast on Wednesday mornings, and I asked them questions about life. And one of the questions I asked one time is, what invention changed your life the most? So you got to think, this guy is 100 years old. I mean, if you think today what invention changed your life, it's probably a cell phone. Of course, you've always known cell phones. But that's not what he said. He said, and he, i got to tell you where he lived. He lived 
basically where Golden Ring Mall is. He had a farm there, and he grew up on that farm. So he's pretty close to Baltimore. Electricity was his answer. You know, so think about that. That was the big invention that changed his life, electricity. And then another question I asked one time was, what was the best present you ever got? And he said, well, me and my brother used to have to walk down Route 7 to school, two miles. And our dad got us a pony, and we could ride a pony to school. Another thing, you know, nobody else is going to tell you they got a pony, right, George? You know, that, that's what, how they got to school, by pony. But anyway, Gurdon turned 100. He's doing great. One of the amazing things about Gurdon is he drives a zero-turn mower. I mean, he flies. He's got a tractor also. Gurdon, as I said, grew up as a farmer, went out to World War II, was out in World War II, ended up making it back out. And he continued farming, went into dairy farming. And then part of his farm is where the Falston, I mean, the Forest Hill Air Park is, and they actually leased part of their field for the runway, and part of the deal was that he got a plane, and he got to learn how to fly, and then he started flying, and he has had a boat, so he's all kinds of things. He rides a stationary bike every day. You know, he's 100 years old. He drives here by himself. It's amazing. So anyway, if you can write a card to him and let him know, happy 100th, that would be wonderful. We have some things going on this week for fellowship events. We have a book club, and the book club meets right out there in our lobby. And if you want to come at 6.30 and be part of that, you're welcome to. Ladies, this Friday night at 7, we have dessert and wine. I say we, not me, because I don't get any. But dessert and wine, and they tell me, Kathy, it's very nice. It is. So, ladies, if you want to show up out here at 7 this Friday night, enjoy that. And then for families, on Saturday night at 6 o'clock, we have family fun night with food, games, activities. So something else for you to do this week. So all kinds of things to think and remember. Well, let's start our... Oh, one other thing. Whoops, I forgot. In your bulletin, Vicar Dave is back there. He is going to get ordained and installed in June. And part of that is he's doing the service, the installation service here in the morning so that all of you can be part of it. And right after that, we are having a catered lunch. We need to know how many folks are coming to the lunch. So there are cards in there. There's information to put it on your calendar and make sure that you are aware that it's happening so you can be part of that installation and ordination service. Amen. (laughs) Let's rise for our invocation. As we make our beginning, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? God's grace knows no bounds. Through the sacrifice of his Son, we are made holy. Let us seek God's grace as we pray for forgiveness and mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us for all that we have done in the past and for not loving others as you have commanded. Grant us your grace and lead us to serve you and to love one another as you love us. God, who is rich in mercy, has loved us even when we were dead in our sin and made us alive together with Christ. 
By grace you have been saved. Your sins have been paid for by Christ. They are forgiven. Amen. You call me from the grave by name You call me out of all my shame I see the old has passed away The new has come Now I have resurrection power Jesus, you have given us freedom, no longer bound by sin and darkness, living in the light of your goodness, you have given us freedom. I'm dressed in your royalty. Your Holy Spirit lives in me. Well, I see my past has been redeemed. The new has come. Now I have resurrection power. Living on the inside, Jesus, you have given us freedom. Giving us freedom, my chains are gone. Freedom, you have given us freedom, you have given us freedom. Hallelujah! Yeah, freedom, you have given us freedom, you have given us freedom. Well, my chains are gone. Now no longer bound by sin and darkness Living in the light of your goodness You have given us freedom Now I have resurrection power Living on the inside, Jesus You have given us freedom Now no longer bound by sin Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you teach us that without love, our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your perfect love so that we may know true goodness and peace. Guide us so that our thoughts, words, and deeds reflect the unconditional love of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
first New Promise reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the fifth chapter. By faith, we have been made acceptable to God. And now, thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ, we have peace with God. Christ has also introduced us to God's gift of undeserved grace on which we now take our stand. So we are happy as we look forward to sharing in the glory of God. But that's not all. We gladly suffer because we know that suffering helps us to endure. And endurance builds character, which gives us hope that will never disappoint us. All of this happens because God has given us the Holy Spirit who fills our hearts with love. The second New Promise reading is from the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had disappeared and so had the sea. Then I saw New Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down from God in heaven. It was like a bride dressed in her wedding gown and ready to meet her husband. I heard a loud voice shout from the throne. God's home is now with his people. He will live with them and they will be his own. Yes, God will make his home among his people. He will wipe all tears from their eyes and there will be no more death, suffering, crying, or pain. These things of the past are gone forever. Then the one sitting on the throne said, I am making everything new. Write down what I have said. My words are true and can be trusted. Everything is finished. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will freely give water from the life-giving fountain to everyone who is thirsty. All who win the victory will be given these blessings. I will be their God and they will be my people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, He's worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Sing only. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and one. No. 
beside you open up my eyes and wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me and I will build my life upon your love it is a I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter After Judas had gone, Jesus said now the Son of Man will be given glory, and he will bring glory to God. Then after God has given glory because of him, God will bring glory to him, and God will do it very soon. My children, I will be with you a little while longer. Then you will look for me, but you won't find me. I tell you just as I told the people, you cannot go where I am going. But I am giving you a new command. You must love each other, just as I have loved you. If you love each other, everyone will know that you are my disciple. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. So each of the confirmands, part of what they have to do is create a face statement, and so we're going to hear those face statements now. I believe that God has created earth, heaven, and me. God has created and given me all of the things I love and enjoy, like the beach, swimming, and the outdoors. I know that God will protect me and will always take care of everything I own and love. God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and will always be looking over me. I believe that Jesus is God's only Son. He died so our sins will be forgiven and we would have eternal life. He rose on the third day and took his place at the right hand of God in heaven. God has blessed me with Holy Communion, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, forgiveness of my sins, the resurrection of our bodies, and eternal life. He has blessed me with my family, my friends, the beach, my two dogs, my creative abilities, the outdoors, and many, many other things. The Holy Spirit allows us to share our love and affection towards God. The Holy Spirit directs us the right way as a representation of our baptism. God forgives our sins daily and will always be watching over us and will always be judging the living and the dead. Philippians 4.13, Christ gives me strength to face anything. I know that God has given me the strength and willpower to face anything. I believe that he will guide me through the ups and downs rights from wrongs, and help me overcome any obstacles that I face. Throughout my life, I have always been surrounded by faith. My great-grandmother, Julia Barnum, whom I am named after, made it a point to go to church every Sunday, no matter where she was. This habit continued through the generations in my family. My grandmother and my mother have both instilled in me a strong connection with God. My great-grandmother passed away only three days after my birthday in 2017, but that is not to say she is still remembered. My mom has always said to me that whenever we see a red cardinal, that is her smiling down at us from heaven. I lost my older brother, who was two years older than me, before I had the chance to meet him, but I believe that he is an angel now with God. He's by my side every step of the way, and I believe that I will meet him one day in heaven. As my English teacher would say, that last sentence does not have a parallel structure. But in my opinion, not everything needs to be parallel. Even though I have done my fair share of things I do regret doing and saying, they are not parallel to the good things I have done and want to do again. As I look back on my past three years in confirmation, I am only now realizing how important it is to me. I have learned so much and to this, I have my guides to credit. I believe that God the Father Almighty has given me my body, mind, faith, friendship, and life. He protects me from evil, and for this, I owe many thanks to him. Jesus Christ, God's only Son, 
my Lord, suffered and died on the cross for our sins. He has saved me and risen from the dead. I believe that the Holy Spirit gifts us with many blessings and forgives us, for we are his sheep. He enlightens and brings faith into my life, which I am very thankful for. Whether I am stepping onto the lacrosse field, onto the block before a swimming race, or standing in the wings before the lights go up prior to a performance, I try to remember that it will all be okay as long as I believe that God will always be there with me and help me, and this I do, I believe. God is the true Father who is kind and wise to the extent which we can't fully comprehend, and we can only continue to thank and worship him. He made the ultimate sacrifice of giving up his son to forgive our sins so we may live in eternal life with him in his perfect kingdom of heaven. From this, we receive the Holy Spirit, which guides us Christians to follow God and his path. The Bible verse which I feel reflects my journey is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2. God cares for you, so turn all your worries over to him. I have always been one to worry. I have let it affect my life in ways I wish I never let it have. I've had learned that these worries tend to cling to what we love the most, and that is where it hurts us the most every single day. But as I went through confirmation and my knowledge of God's love grew, I learned that the only thing you can truly do is to cast your worries upon the Lord, and he is with us every moment of every day. God has always supported and loved my family in many ways. The first of them being that my parents love me and take care of me. God provides me a home, clothing, food, friends, and of course, my family. God sent his only son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and I'm grateful that he did. I used to think that prayer was about asking for things that you wanted, but I was completely wrong. I have learned at confirmation that prayer helps us communicate with God and brings me and him closer together. We should pray for forgiveness of our sins to help us become better people to not only ourselves, but to others. If we just ask God for forgiveness, he will forgive us. I have chosen the Bible verse Matthew 7, 21. It states, not everyone who calls me their Lord will get into the kingdom of heaven. Only the ones who obey my Father in heaven will get in. This means that Jesus wants only those who are truly in his faith to get into heaven. None of us are perfect, but he is perfect, and he sacrificed himself so that we can have forgiveness of his sins and his righteousness. When we receive his righteousness by putting faith in him, we are then able to go to heaven. God has a plan for my life and he knows my future. God knows what is best for me more than anyone else, so I completely trust him with my life. I plan to include God in my future. I plan to come to church as much as possible and pray as much as possible. I couldn't imagine my life without God because then my life would be pointless and not meaningful. In the Apostles' Creed, the first article states, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of earth and heaven. I truly believe in this because God has made us and the earth. God, God wanted us and created us so that he could love us. Traveling is something my family and I do and really enjoy doing. I acknowledge that we have been blessed by God to be able to explore his awesome world. While traveling, we like to hike through the parks that we visit. During our hikes, I often listen to the sounds of nature around me, and that often leads me to think about the complex creation of our earth. The knowledge of God starting with a void and ending with a beautiful galaxy and making everything the way he meant it to be is amazing to me. Thinking about the past often thinks, makes me think about what the future might have in store for me, and that often worries me because I don't know what will or won't happen, and that is scary. I can always find comfort in Isaiah 54 verse 10. Every mountain and hill may disappear, but I will always be kind and merciful to you. I won't break my agreement to give your nation peace. That verse gives me comfort because I interpret it as God saying that no matter what will happen, he will always love and care for us. I may not know what the future holds for me, but I know that God does know and he has a plan. 
Just like he had a plan to free us from our sins when Jesus died and when he defeated death, then ascended into heaven so that the Holy Spirit could come down and enter our hearts so that we could believe. Through the Holy Spirit, I will continue to love and worship my amazing creator, who I know without a doubt will always love and comfort me. I look forward to also being able to continue to enjoy and explore his beautiful creation while thanking him for all he has done and continues to do for me. God is our Father and the creator of all things on earth. He spent six days creating everything I know and love in and about this world. When he made me, he blessed me with the ability to run, have high work ethic, and smarts to help me succeed in academics and my athletics. Jesus died for our sins. He died to allow us to make mistakes and seek forgiveness after we've made those mistakes. Jesus spread the word of God during his time on earth. Without him spreading God's word and dying for our sins, then I wouldn't have the ability to make mistakes in my life and seek forgiveness as I do in time of need. In belief, I, I believe the Holy Spirit lives within me and all of you. The Holy Spirit helps me see what is right and wrong in decision making in my life. The Holy Spirit also opens up my heart and mind to God every day and in time of need. As I thank God about my life, I think about the things I love the most, baseball and my family. Baseball is one of my favorite things to do as, as I enjoy it a lot. I'm so grateful God provided me to explore his amazing world. While traveling to baseball, I love to look out the window and see the amazing views and wildlife. I acknowledge God for the amazing animals, trees, and mountains that he created. I thank God for looking over me, just me, just not me, but my teammates and my opponents to keep us safe from any evil while we were playing the sport we love. I thank God for giving me the strength to push through with the ups and downs as I play one of the most mental sports. God, our Father, gifted me with my strength my height, my smartness on the field, my speed, and my courage to play with the best of the best at my sport. I want to expand on the gifts God has given me, and I trust him that he is right there with me. Just like baseball, I know God is there in all other parts of my life, too. I trust in him to give and guide me and keep me and my family safe in life. I know that when all else falls, God's love will never vanish. I have never learned that I can, I have learned that I can have a relationship with God and communicate and not just ask him for things. I think, I like God to thank, wait, I like to thank God for the blessings and positive things in my life and for the lessons I learned. I know, I like knowing that God is my strength and trust him to always do what's best for me. God has already given me his Holy, His only son to die on the cross to show us that we will have forgiveness of our sins. He shows me his love for us and with God in my life. I can do all things. There's a lot of my life to love. God, family, soccer, and the list can go on. Soccer's a lot of my life. Taking up weekends, days with friends, summers, and more. I play this game through God. He watches over me throughout the whole experience. The car rides to and from, God keeps me safe. During the game, the God, God keeps me safe. He keeps my teammates and my opponents safe. He has also given us the great grasp we play on. He helps us play a fun and safe game. God is something we cannot fully comprehend, but I know God is one but three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he loves me and all of his fathers. God gave up one of his one and only son to protect us from sin and death, which is showing unconditional love. Jesus spread the word of God and the Christian faith. Jesus died for us to forgive our sins. The Holy Spirit was given to me during baptism. The Holy Spirit to me is faith. It helps me understand that I am loved and heard by God. And I want people who don't understand and would like to understand this faith. I used to believe that prayer was that for those who need something and to pray to God when you only need him. I was completely wrong. Prayer is for, for those who want to communicate with God and become closer with Him. Saying a simple prayer when you wake up and go to bed has, and go to bed has changed my perspective on God. I want to come to God not in only situations where I'm looking for help, but I want to come to God daily to say thanks and praise Him. 
I reflect on a Bible verse, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, which says, I'm able to do all things through him who strengthens me. I live by this. I do all things through God. He gives me strength to do all things throughout my day, to smile, to laugh, to love others, to stand, to hear, to smile, to touch, to run, everything. I give him thanks for providing me with the strength throughout my days and days to come. So that took a lot of courage, so let's give them a hand. So many of you, most of you probably, went through confirmation, you that are older. And maybe you remember your confirmation, remember something about it and, you know, what you had to go through, what you had to do. Maybe you had to memorize or be questioned or things like that. But one of the things that maybe you don't remember is the blessing that was done on you at confirmation. You know, we're going to have each of these folks, confirmants, come up here and we're going to bless them and we're going to say this blessing. But they're going to have their families gathered around them. It's exciting. They're not going to remember. And my guess is if I asked any of you, do you remember the blessing you received on confirmation? You probably don't. So this past Tuesday and confirmation, I wanted them to hear what the final sentence says of that blessing. And it's been pretty much the same. I have a liturgy that was printed in 1917, and I looked in there, and it's still in there. It was in there back then, and it's still in there today. What it says is that they will be patient in suffering. Wait a second, what's that about? So Tuesday I said, you know, you guys are going to confirm your faith, confirm your baptism. You're going to be a follower of Christ and a disciple of Christ. And you're signing up for suffering. You will have suffering. We are told that again and again in Scripture. We're told that in the Scripture that was read in Romans by Julia. To be joyful in your suffering. To be full of joy when you suffer. We hear that not just from St. Paul and Romans, we hear it from St. Peter in his letters. He says, rejoice in your suffering. And if you say, well, that's only two of them, well, what about St. James? St. James tells us to be joyful, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds and suffering. In fact, if you look... In the New Testament, again and again, you're going to hear that. You're going to hear it from Jesus. Even in the Beatitudes, right? Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You will have suffering. You will have suffering because you're signing up to be a follower of Jesus. You know, we heard that wonderful gospel lesson that Jesus gave us a new command to love others. To love others. And people will know that you are my disciple if you love others. And so you're saying that you're going to be a disciple of Jesus, a follower of Jesus. So you have to love others. Well, love involves suffering quite often. Talk to your parents. Patience and suffering. Any of you that are parents out there know about patience and suffering. It happens. You know, there's going to be times out there where you're going to hear the name Jesus Christ. But you're not going to particularly hear it in a good way. People are going to be swearing by his name. And are you willing to say, oh, I'm glad you're calling on the guy that I believe in, that is God. You know, and then they're going to look at you weird and you could be persecuted. You could go through trials. You could go through tribulation. But that's what you're signing up for here by saying that you confirm your faith and you confirm your baptism. You're confirming that you're going to live that way. You're going to love others that isn't so easy, like washing the disciples' feet. Jesus showed us a way to love others and said that we're to follow that. We're to wash people's feet? Are you signing up for that? Ms. Morgan, you signing up for that? Hmm. So, what do you do? 
we're to love others. Even in those times where it will take great patience. You know, we in our culture, the way we are, because it's in our DNA, is we want things to be our way. We want comfort. We want to be happy. We want to do what we want to do. But when you sign up to be a servant of Christ, a disciple of Christ, you're saying, not my way, but your way, God. Your will be done is what we're saying. Well, giving up your way is suffering, right? Instead of having your way, you're willing to love someone and let them have their way. When they strike you on the cheek, you know, you want to hit them back, right? They deserve to be hit back. They hit you. Not if you're a Christian. Not if you're doing like Christ said. You know, you're willing to suffer to follow what God says. You're willing to let people know that you're different. We've been doing this sermon series for Easter season called 180. And this is truly a 180. Because the world's way of suffering is to complain, to get their way, to have people have pity on you when you suffer. But that's not the Christian way. The Christian way is to show joy. To show patience, to show love and kindness, to be a peacemaker in your suffering, not hitting back, not lashing out, but to be totally different. And that's because you're not part of this world anymore. When you were baptized and when you received the gift of the Holy Spirit in your baptism, you became a citizen of heaven, that place that was in our second reading that Julia talked about. That place that it, there is no pain, where there's no sadness, where there's no more death, no crying. That place where there is no suffering, there'll be no troubles. That amazing place, because that's where you're really a citizen of now. That's where there'll be no suffering. But as long as you're in this world, the reason you're here, the reason that you're a follower of Christ, is so that others will see that you're different. They'll see that there's a 180, there's something totally different in your life. And they might ask, why? Why do you put up with that? If somebody starts talking bad about some people and starts treating them poorly, and you stand up for that person, and maybe they start to treat you poorly, wait, why would you do that? Because you are a follower of Christ. Because you are confirming your faith in that one that is God, in your life. You know, suffering. Nobody likes it. But you are a citizen of heaven. You are a child of God. You are loved by God. And God will be with you in all things. He will give you that strength that you've heard about. That's in many of your confirmation verses. He will be with you. You'll get to have that wonderful joy of knowing all things. So now we're going to get into the part of your bulletin that says the confirmation service. And so if you want to open up your bulletin and we'll be doing what where it says right of confirmation. These persons have been instructed in the Christian faith and desire to make public affirmation of their faith. Aiden James Knapp. Julia Catherine Renberg. Haley Elizabeth Rudd. Morgan Lynn Thomas. Rebecca Ruth Tittle. Ashton Jeffrey Tolson. Brian Christopher Tolson. And Cameron Robert Tolson. Dear friends, we rejoice that we that you now desire to make confirmation of your faith and assume greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission in the world. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of the church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from his word, God's loving purpose for you and all of creation. You, have been, you will be nourished at his table and called to be witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus. Reject sin and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we were baptized. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all of his empty promises? 
Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? And we pray the prayer of the church that's printed there together. Let us pray for those who are affirming their baptism and for all baptized everywhere, that they may be redeemed from all evil and rescued from the way of sin and death. Lord, in your mercy, that the Holy Spirit may open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, in your mercy, that they may be kept in faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, in your mercy, that they may be sent into the world in witness to your love. Lord, in your mercy, that they may be brought to the fullness of your peace and glory, Lord, in your mercy. We remember before you also at this time, O God of comfort, all who are ill, our shut-ins, those with special anxieties, needs, and cares. We pray for comfort for the family of Catherine Renberg, Julia's grandmother that passed away the day before yesterday that you would hold that family in your hands, that they would realize the treasure of heaven that she is now in, that you would hold them in your gracious keeping, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. You have made public profession of your faith, Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism and to live among God's faithful people, to hear his word, share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? Aiden. Julia. Haley. Morgan. Rebecca. Ashton. Brandon. Cameron. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through water and spirit, you have made these young people your own. You forgave them all their sins and brought them to newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence through Jesus Christ. Amen. Be seated. Aiden, come up here. And so what we always ask is that the family and friends of the confirmed person come on up so Aiden's family come on up here kneel down so Aiden's Bible verse is Christ gives me strength to face anything from Philippians 4 13 if you want to put a hand on him and help us in the blessing or a hand on each other, whatever, reach in here. We're all blessing him. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Aden the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, and give him patience in suffering. Amen. Aden, give you this. Aiden, 
Julia's family would like to come up. Julia's Bible verses, my dear friends, we must love each other. Love comes from God. When we love each other, it shows we have been given new life. We are now God's children and we know him. Everyone up here? Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Julia the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving and give her patience in suffering. Amen. In Haley's Bible verse. God cares for you, so turn all your worries over to him from 1 Peter 5, 7. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Haley the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life, empower her in her serving, and give her patience in suffering. Okay. Thank you. Morgan. Morgan's Bible verse is, Not everyone who calls me their Lord will get into the kingdom of heaven. Only the ones who obey my Father in heaven will get in from Matthew 7-2. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Morgan the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. And give her patience in suffering. Amen. And Rebecca. Might have a crowd. Rebecca's Bible verses, Every mountain and hill may disappear, but I will always be kind and peaceful to you. I won't break my agreement to give your nation peace from Isaiah 54.10. Get everybody in here. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Rebecca the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in serving, and give her patience in suffering. Amen. And Ashton. Ashton's Bible verse is, No disciples seem pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. <laughs> They're going to bless you too. <laughs> Get everybody up here. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Ashton the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him in his serving. And give him patience in suffering. Amen. Brandon. Brandon's Bible verse is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Brandon the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him in his serving. And give him patience in suffering. Amen. And Cameron. Cameron's Bible verse says, I can endure all things through the power of the one who gives me strength. Father in heaven, 
for Jesus' sake, stir up in Cameron the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him in his serving. And give him patience in suffering. Amen. There's three gifts for you there. I invite you to rise as we prepare for the service of the sacrament. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your mercy you remained faithful to your children when they rejected your word and sought their own way. You did not abandon them to death, but established hope for the day when your Son would redeem and restore your people by his obedient life and life-giving death. Giving thanks for all that Jesus has accomplished and trusting in his word and promise, we come in his name to receive his body and blood in the bre this bread and wine, guided by the Holy Spirit. Renew our hearts and minds to live out our faith in ways that are pleasing to you, holy God, for you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Amen. And we believe that this is truly our Lord Jesus Christ's very body and blood in this appearance of bread and wine. And if you believe that too, we welcome you to join us at the table of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
Let us rise. And now, may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting depart in peace. And that we join together in the prayer our Lord Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It seems to me that these young people have taken a big step. And I wonder, do you have next steps for all of us, Pastor Blaze? Sure, we just prayed, thy will be done. So we want God's will. What's his will? A new commandment I give you, to love others as I have loved you. People will know that you are my followers by how you love others. So you have to be patient in your suffering sometimes to do that kind of loving. Amen. And receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. There's got to be more than going back and forth, doing right and doing wrong. We were tough, that's who we are. Come on, get in line right behind me. You along with everybody Thinking there's worth in what you do Then like a hero who takes the stage When we're on the edge of our seat Saying it's too late Let me introduce you to amazing grace No matter the bumps and no matter the bruises, no matter the scars, still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made you flawless. And no matter the hurt or how deep the wound is, no matter the pain, still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made you flawless possibly be we simply can't believe that this unconditional kind of love be enough to take a filthy wretch like this wrap him up in righteousness that's exactly what he did it's no matter the bumps no matter the bruises no matter the scars still the truth is the cross has made the cross has made you flawless and no matter the hurt or how deep the wound is no matter the pain still the truth is the cross has made the cross has made you flawless breath smile and say right here right now i'm okay because the cross was enough and like a hero who takes the stage when we on the edge of our seat saying it's too late let me introduce you to grace grace god's grace no matter the bumps and no matter the bruises no matter the scars still the truth is the cross has made the cross has made you flawless and no matter the hurt or how deep the is no matter the pain still the truth is the cross has made the cross has made you flawless no matter what they say or what they think you are the day you called his name he made you flawless he made you flawless Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises, no matter the scars, still the truth is the cross has made, the 
cross has made you flawless And no matter the hurt or how deep the wound is No matter the pain, still the truth is The cross has made, the cross has made you flawless say oh what they think you are the day you called his name he made you flawless he made